Good morning to the Shekinah family. And good afternoon to those who will join us later on on Facebook and YouTube. I bring greetings from our pastor, the Reverend David John, who is on holiday. We are the Shekinah Wesley Holiness Church, located in Church Village, St. Philip, in the beautiful island of Barbados. We welcome all of you. We're here to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And my theme for today is wisdom of an old sage. The theology of balance. My text will come from Ecclesiastes for the purpose of the discussion this morning, we can bring up Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. A regular quoted text at funerals. This morning I'll just read it as a foundation to give you a sense of where I'm going. Let us stand for the reading of the word. To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rain or tear and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the world that God made from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Indeed, a very challenging text, a very interesting text, and I would dare say a very radical text. But this is where we are going this morning. The wisdom of an old sage a theology of balance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the wisdom that we will be delving into this morning. We thank you for the truth bearing. We thank you for the challenges bearing. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. We are glad that your word is truth. We are glad that in it we know we have eternal life. Father, 
as we should search the scriptures, we ask for your enlightenment. We realize that within ourselves, we really lack the knowledge, the understanding. And therefore, we ask for the understanding, O oh God, that we may interpret your scriptures correctly. Because every scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof and doctrine. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we look to you. We recognize as well that there are many needs represented in our congregation this morning. We remember Sister Anne-Marie, who is hospitalized, and who needs your touch this morning, Father. And we ask, O oh God, that you stretch forth the nail-pierced hands of Calvary and heal our sister, O oh God, and bring her back to the house of God to share the testimony of your healing and of your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. We think of Sister Holder, who has not been able to be with us. O oh God, we have asked in the name of Jesus that you would visit her and comfort her in the name of Jesus. We think of Sister Aileen who has lost her beloved of, of many years. And we, 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 we appreciate, or we, we could really appreciate the, the challenge to be alone, not to have your love, your long love at your side every moment of the day. Father, we ask for comfort this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And indeed others, oh God, who are shut in, Father, we remember them this morning. And we ask for visitation of your spirit in their rooms, oh God, in their homes, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we pray that you would visit Sister McCollin this morning in the name of Jesus. Visit Sister Clark this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, visit all the elderly of Shekinah. Those names that would fail me right now, I pray you would visit in Jesus' precious name. Comfort them, let them know that we still love them. Let them know that they are precious to you, dear God. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Bless our people and challenge us today as we worship. As we explore the wisdom of an old sage in theology of balance. Praise the Lord. You may have your seat as we invite the worship team to heal to direct us further in worship. God bless them as they come. Hallelujah. Sing lustily as unto the Lord. Clap your hands, you people. Dance in the presence of the Lord. Give God your best. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the King of Kings. And a lot of applause. We are alive this morning and we are thankful for his goodness for us this morning. Amen. And let us sing up to the Lord with a, a grateful heart. Why are you carrying the way?
and books were chosen to be a part of what we call the canon of scripture. The Jews would have examined a number of books and they decided on what books would be accepted and what books would be rejected. When it came to the New Testament, the same thing happened. The church did it. So what we have today is as a result of the church's deliberation and saying these are the books that we would accept and those are the books that we will reject. So the Bible is really a product of the church. Hard to appreciate perhaps. And while it is evident that Ecclesiastes' place in the Hebrew canon of 39 books was secure before the first century, many began to question the wisdom of its inclusion because of the reasons mentioned above. Yet, Ecclesiastes is filled with rich nuggets of wisdom that, that can only or that could only proceed from the lips of a very wise man. I would however caution readers not to be too hasty to develop major doctrines based on this book. And I say this because while it is rich with truth, it contains many ideas that are exposed from a position of frustration with life. The writer looked at life and drew conclusions from a human perspective, only to come later and revise those ideas from a more spiritual, orthodox perspective. For example, on many occasions he seems to be saying that wisdom is useless and work is futile. And I quote, for example, chapter 1, 16 to 18, I said to myself, I have acquired great wisdom, surpassing so all who are over Jerusalem before me, and my mind has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my mind to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is but a chasing after the men. Can you ever catch the men? No, you can't. In other words, it is true time. For in much wisdom is much vexation. And those who increase knowledge increase sorrow. But he returns in another discussion that promotes wisdom like the writers of Proverbs, when he said, Better is a poor wise youth than an old foolish king who will no longer be advice. A lot of truth there. The book of Ecclesiastes falls under the genre of wisdom literature. A writer was traditionally known to be Solomon, who sought wisdom rather than riches when he became king of Israel. And there is internal support for this idea. In 1 1, the writer said, he, as a matter of fact, he declared himself to be son of David king in, his, in Jerusalem. He saw himself as a wise man whose responsibility according to chapter 12 verses 9 and following was to teach the people knowledge, reading and studying and arranging many proverbs. The teacher sought to find pleasing words and he wrote words of truth plainly. Now because this writer never identified himself by name, many scholars choose alternatively to call him by his Hebraic title, which is Kohelet. Kohelet is the Hebrew word translated teacher or preacher. The title therefore is the title that this writer claimed for himself. He called himself Kohelet in the Hebrew. And it is by this designation that I will refer to him this morning, Kohelet. Now Kohelet's look on life, uh, of look on life was often that of a skeptic. Hear him in chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. A good name is better than precious ointment. Sounds good so far. And the day of death than the day of birth. Wow. 
It is better to go to, go to the house of mourning than go to the house of feasting. Mm, which of you would choose that? For, the, for this is the end of everyone, and the living will lay to heart. I'll come back to that later. And then he says, sorrow is better than laughter. For by sadness of countenance the heart is made glad. The house of the wise is in the house of mourning, but a heart of fools is in the house of mirth. A worthwhile question this morning would be, what was this writer trying to achieve? Was he trying to confuse his readers? Was he a basic skeptic? I want to suggest that a closer reading of the text should erase many of the apparent contradictions. The writer is seeking to dispel many of the accepted myths of a work wisdom and spirituality. He's proposing a balance to life, a theology of balance. He's inviting the reader to look at life more broadly. Everything does not work out according to plan, even for us as Christians. Life throws us some curveballs, which we must negotiate. But don't lose so we can make it. Amen. Koheleth never lost sight of God in all of his deliberations. He kept his readers aware that no matter what they do, they have to face God in the end. That was a constant reminder in the book of Ecclesiastes. And when he seemingly dismissed the fruitfulness of work, he reminds that it is God's gift to be enjoyed. So you gotta love work. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's examine in the theology, his theology, or uh, let's examine his theology, I'm sorry, over the following four headings. First of all, we are going to look at laments over concerns of life. Laments over concern of life. Lessons from contradictions of life. Lectures in caching on life. And lectures of caution on life. Hallelujah. Laments over concerns of life, first of all. Kohelet made some observations that caused him much anxiety and frustration. Here was a wise man that began to look at life in a philosophical way. And sometimes we need to sit back and become a little philosophical. But that's what Kohelet did. And he became frustrated and he had some concerns over the value, first of all, the value of work for the long term. Why should I be working? Where is working more than he was asking himself? And he had some conclusions that he didn't like. First of all, money can't go in a week. According to chapter 4 and verse 13, there is a grievous ill that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owners to their hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture. Though they are parents of children, they have nothing in their hands. In other words, one day you could be rich, and the next day you can be poor. And that was his concern. When it don't seem that it doesn't make any sense then to be working, then one day you could be rich, and the next day you're poor. But he went on. Another concern that he had was that you can't take your earnings to the other side. All the money that you make. All the land that you buy, you can't take it to the other side. I heard a joke once about a man who used to be, as we were saying, Barbados, Kravichus. <laughs> Over land. He was always confusing his neighbors and everybody over land. So when he died, 
an old lady was seen walking around his coffin. Somebody said, what are you doing, old lady? She said, I'm looking to see if he has if he's going to take his life with him. <laughs> you can't take your earnings to the other side. As they came from their mother's womb, says Kowale, so they shall go again naked as they came. They shall take nothing for their child, which they may carry with their hands. This also is a grievous ill. Just as they came, so shall they go. And what gain do they have from toiling for the rain? Futility. Besides, all their days they eat in darkness, in much vexation and sickness and resentment. So here the writer was saying, you can't take anything from this life to the next life, and it seems unfair. You accumulate all of this wealth, you accumulate all of these, uh, this prop these properties, but you can't take it with you. And it seems unfair to Kohelet. Kohelet had a solution for him. Verse 18 said, this is what else seemed to be good. It is fitting to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with this one toil under the sun. The few days of life God gives, for this is our law. Likewise, all to whom God gives wealth and possessions and whom he enables to enjoy them and to accept their law and find enjoyment in their toil. It is the gift of God. In other words, Kohala said, listen, spend some of your money here on this side. Well, it's not a bad thing to have a large bank account. No, if you leave it on the bank, you're not going to enjoy it. You must make that. The Egyptians had this one salt going on. Put some of the riches in the tomb of the dead so he or she may be comfortable on the other side. <laughs> I don't know how that would work in reality, but. That was their belief and they did it. And therefore they mummified their dead and they placed some of the shields and some of the crowns and so on that they had on this life. They placed them in the tomb so that when they go to the next life, they take some of their riches with them. A nice idea, but it may not be real. Thirdly, and this had poor health real upset. You have to leave it for someone on this side. So you accumulate a lot of, a lot of wealth, or do you want to die, go over there and leave it to somebody on this side? And this had Kohel upset. This is what he said. I hated all my time in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who came after me. And worse yet, and who knows whether they be wise or foolish. <laughs> so you can accumulate a lot in life, and then you may leave it, and a fool may get it. And spend it all in the gym. So what Kohel did was not be for this. But also he was, and secondly, he was, he was concerned over the fate of the righteous versus the unrighteous. The Kohel, both had the same fate. Now we're talking about a time when there was no idea of resurrection. And Kohel said in chapter 9 verse 3, this is an evil thing that all happens under the sun, that the same fate comes to everyone. Moreover, the hearts of all are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live, and after they go to the dead. But whoever is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. The living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no reward, and even the memory of them is lost. This is great concern to go ahead. Because as far as he is concerned, the righteous will die, and the wicked will die, and they're all going to see a place, she all, the place of the dead. And this caused him to be very so they have the same fate. But worse yet, both are forgotten. The wise will have eyes in their, in their head, verse 
14 of chapter 2. But fools walk in darkness, yet they perceive that the same fate befalls all of them. Then I said to myself, What happens to the fool? What happens to the also? Why then have I been so very wise? And I said to myself, This also is vanity. In other words, the same thing that happens to the righteous will happen to them. Are righteous. So, these situations in life cause him to lament, to be gravely concerned, to be frustrated. But I want to hasten on to what I'm calling lessons from contradictions of life. And there are some contradictions in life. And as I said in my introductory remarks, things don't always work out as we perceive them should work out. And as Christians, if you're not aware of this, we can lose faith. Because in our mind, we feel that everything should work out smoothly. It does not work so in real life. The first contradiction is funerals or benedict feasts. That's a contradiction. Chapter 7 says in verse 1, A good name is better than precious ornament and the day of death than the day of mirth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of everyone. And the living will lay to heart. And this is the important point. I don't know about you. But every time I go to a funeral, it causes me to reflect on my own life. Every time I hear a eulogy, I ask myself, what will they say of me? Will anyone in the crowd say, that's not the Robin I know? I hear all those lovely words. But the reality is that it is a time of reflection. You don't get that when you go to a party. You enjoy yourself. But when you go to a funeral, it causes you to think. Before my mom passed, every funeral I used to ask myself, I wonder how I will deal, or uh, how I will deal with my mom's passing. Or did it happen and then they had to deal with it. So funerals are better than feasts. Secondly, sorrow is better than laughter. No one likes to cry, but it is amazing that the therapy that results from, from crying, from tears. There are emotional benefits and spiritual benefits. Psalm 34 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 51 verse 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. There is a place for tears. And even though tears are something that we don't like, yet they are benefits that are true to our lives. We can't always be rejoicing. We can't always be, be, be in a place in a party mood. Thirdly, better a rebuke than a cover up. Verse 5 It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. Receiving a rebuke is never pleasant, but a wise man or woman will take it in strike, even if they feel a little resentful at first. To be quite honest, we don't like to be corrected. But you know when go home and you begin to say, yeah, yeah, it's really true. It's true. It is true. Better we do than a cover up. Fourthly, life is about balance. Balance the good with the bad. Listen to the pro this progressive but controversial theology. Now you are not going to like this. If Brother Robin had preached this or wrote this, he would be put out in the church. Chapter 7, verses 15 to 18. In my vain life, I have seen everything. There are righteous people who perish in their righteousness, and there are wicked people who prolong their life in their evil doing. That is, that is progressive enough. Verse 16. Do not be too righteous, and do not act too wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Not too righteous. Verse 17, do not be too wicked, and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? 
Verse 18, it is good that you should take hold of the one with whom letting go of the other. For the one who fears God shall succeed in hope. Kohel says, don't be too righteous. Keep a little evil along with you. <laughs> this is right. This is right. It is even unscriptural, we would say. However, I think the modern equivalent would be, don't be too heavenly righteous to be of no earthly good. As Christians, we have been taught to be, you know, trusting and so on, but we need to understand that in life, we have to be able to mix. Sometimes as Christians, we feel that that should mean that we should separate ourselves from people who are deemed not Christians. In that case, you have to be working for Christians and working with Christians. But the reality is wherever we go, we're going to find persons who are not Christians. And you're going to learn to get along. As Christians, we have been taught to be trusted. Most of us are not street boys, and so may be easily fooled. Go help me say you're not the street boys. You can't be so righteous that you don't know what's going on on the ground. <laughs> That's what we get fooled, you know, because we don't understand. So, so some persons come to with some schemes, and you don't realize that it's a scheme. But you have to be street boys. They, you, they, they can't trick the people on the streets, you know, because they are street boys. They know these tricks. But we, we, we are so isolated, we don't get the tricks. And we're deceived. Mm -hmm. God's here. Well, that's a no. We are often too gullible. Kohel is saying, don't, have, don't be naive to thinking that all our goodness is gold. Don't let people take advantage of your goodness. And that's another one. If you're not careful as a believer, you will feel that everything that somebody asks, or every time they ask, you have to give. And they cry and they, you know, they, they bring their, their stories and their crocodile tears and their own woeful stories. But they are all ploys to deceive. You gotta be very careful. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to be naive. I shouldn't be naive. Don't let people play for food. So don't ever be over trusting. Wisdom gives strength to the wise more than ten rulers that are in a city. Surely there is no one earth on earth so righteous as to do good with whoever sin and don't let anybody fool you. So when the person is coming, I, oh, she would never do that to me. Oh, yeah. He would never do that to me. He's a good Christian. Yeah. Go ahead and say, no. There's no one on earth so righteous as to do good without sinning. Do not give to everything that people say or you may hear your servant. Sorry, let me repeat. Do not give me, verse 21, to everything that people say or you may hear your servant cursing you. You know, people can bring a story to you that is so convincing. And, and especially when you move in a new organization or a new, a new place of worship or whatever, there's some, somebody's going to come and tell you, oh, somebody, be careful with Brother Pilgrims. Be normal, he looks so. Be careful. And if you do not take the time to know but the time is for yourself, you'll be deceived. I've found that in life. Get to know people for yourself. I want to move on to my third major point. Lectures to cash in our life. There's so much wisdom in this, this chapter, in this book. And there are four quick points I want to make. First of all, it says so into people's life. But I, I interpret it that way. So into people. That is given to their needs. Chapter 11, verse 1. Send your, out your bread on many waters. Uh, King James Version will say, cast your bread on many waters. 
For after many days, you will get it back. Look, there's something about investing and giving to people. If you are stingy, don't expect many blessings. And this principle works whether you're a Christian or non-Christian. If you realize that people that give a lot always have, that's a fact. So sowing to people, first cash in principle. Secondly, invest in multiple instruments. Put it in the of it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket or the same basket. Chapter 9, verse 2. Devoid your means seven ways or even eight, for you do not know what disaster may happen on earth. You know, sometimes you believe that we got to be in faith. So, by faith, I put it in here. All of my money was there. And then that company collapsed, and all your money gone. Ask me, I was with Glee Gold. Thank God to Mia and her team, hallelujah. But I almost lost everything. But something tell me keep paying, brother. Something bound to happen sometime. And I kept paying. People tell me, I stop, I stop. I ain't been a set more. I said, ah. I never told my, my, my employees to stop withdrawing funds every month. I kept paying. Then one day, I walked in the cross, and I was in that long line. Spent a whole day from 9 to 5. But the end of the day, I walked over the check. <laughs> So don't put all your invest in multiple instruments. Three, sow in all seasons. Now this is a critical one. So you are, uh, you are telling me so during COVID? I'm saying yes. Because you don't know when COVID is gonna, is gonna finish. But if you wait until COVID is finished, when you can be sow, you are waiting six months to reap. People are reaping and making money and you are getting nothing. So, so, in all seasons, whoever observed the wind, listen to the forehead, whoever observed the wind will not sow, and whoever regards the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know how breath comes to the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the word of God who makes everything. You don't know, so you sow. Invest. Hallelujah. Quickly, I have to move. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, though. You got cash in. Kohel's biggest concern was what happens to the fruits of our labor. Will our children get them or will a fool? Listen to him in chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, and it lies heavier upon humankind. Those to whom God gives wealth, possessions, and honor so that they lack nothing of all that they desire. Yet God does not enable them to enjoy these things, but a stranger enjoys them. This is vanity. Listen, one of my, sometime this year, a neighbor of mine, you would have heard about the post who was murdered and thrown into a well. He was, he was going to be my neighbor, and they tell you, it hurt me deep, deeply. He would show me every Sunday he'd come up. And he would tell me, man, down this Bobby Downs. He said, man, I love like, to move in this year. You know, he never spent on nothing in his house. Not a single thing in his house. And this is what the concern of poor Helen. We gotta enjoy the fruits of all day. And that is why while we are living, we got to spend some. I made up my money in 2018. I spent it some of my money. I went to England at the end of 2018. I had a blast. And I tell myself, I tell my sister, I'll be back next year. 
But this year, because they came back in January, I tell us straight, I'll be back in December. I don't think that they really believe me because it was the gap between 1985 and 19, well, sorry, 2018 when I traveled to England. A major gap. So they didn't really believe me. But I was back in 2019. And the only thing that has stopped me from traveling this year is COVID. I intend to enjoy something. Because you don't know when something is going to happen. I want to go in a blast. <laughs> you don't know? So we're going to enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. You got a value friendship, not a quick one. Value friendship, two are better than one. Verse nine of chapter nine, because they have good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to the one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But can, but how can one keep warm alone? You got value friendship. Everybody needs a friend. You don't need a lot. You need at least one good friend. Somebody you can call up and run a, a, a situation on. You need a friend. You live alone and you live by yourself and you don't you, you can't relate to people. You're gonna be in trouble. You need a friend. Everybody needs a friend. A good friend. Lectures into cash in our life. This is how you're going to cash in. Finally, lectures of caution in life. This can't go without this. A caution to the youth. Go ahead and say to the youth, be cheerful. Chapter 9, chapter 11, verse 9. Rejoice your man while you are young and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Be cheerful, enjoy your youth, young people. Enjoy your youth. Don't let you get old and you can't enjoy life. Secondly, he said, pursue your dreams. In that same text, he said, follow the inclination of your heart and the desire of your eyes. So pursue your dreams. Dream big and pursue your dreams. Don't keep putting them off. I you going to study, but not now. And you're getting older and older. If you are planning to study now, do it now, you're young. And for those who are unattached, do it now, you're unattached too. Right now. Uh -huh. Easy study when you attach. Because when you want to study, she wants to hear you. <laughs> he wants to hear you. Pursue your dreams. <laughs> Give God your best years, young people. Remember now, you're created in the days of your youth. Give God your best years. Amen. Amen. But if we should remember in, in, when we were in, in the youth, every crusade that took place in Queen's Park, we would be there. Right. Every single one, every single night. We yeah, had no attachment, a young, free, Carefree. We just went to every day, every service. Give God your best years. Be aware of judgment, though. So go ahead, it's very small. He said, listen, enjoy yourself. But listen, this ain't God's judgment coming. So be careful and enjoy them. He said, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So he wants you to enjoy life, but he's cautioning you. Enjoy life, but, 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 there's a judgment. Banish anxiety from your mind. You will achieve if you stick to your goals. You are not going to achieve everything overnight. And for those who are studying, it, studying is something to be hard. When others are sleeping, you have to be studying. I can talk a lot about studying. Amen. My Lord. Amen, when I was doing my bachelor's, I Refuse to go to, to go to a single church sports 
every bank holiday I used to go to law school and hide away in a room and do some work. Every single bank holiday. Many Saturdays, all day. So you gotta stick to your goals. But it's also the caution to the mature. These are the only ones now. Say so rejoice in your years. Verse 8. Even those who live many years shall rejoice in them all. Some, and then he cautioned again, he said, oh, some days will be dark. It's reality, you know. This man is a realist. He said, listen, enjoy your years. As, as a matter of fact, when you are in good health, I, I, I've been really learning to appreciate my health. Health, boy, let me tell you something. I am seeing people that are my age that they are not moving too well. And the fact that I can still do, how many more you did uh, yesterday? 10.7 kilometers and come back home and feel good? It means that I ain't too bad right now. A little hypertension there. I deal with that. But the thing is, you better appreciate and enjoy your health. Rejoice in your ears, some days will be dark. So sometimes it might be some aches and pain, so enjoy it while it lasts. And then he gives a final caution to all. He ends up the book like this, fear God. Look, don't care what you do. Pursue your dreams, make some money, get some wealth, do some traveling, enjoy yourself, but fear God. Because at the end of the day, all of that I just mentioned is vanity and a chasing after the wind. Keep his commandments is the second one. Fear God. You can't fear God without keeping his commandments. That would be a major contradiction. Follow his word. Obey his word. And again, for hell is again. For hell is a serious thing. There is a judgment. He said the end of the matter all has been heard. Fear God, keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So, I challenge you this morning to enjoy your life. Take some hints from the wise man and all wise sage. Koheleth would wish to tell us today that life is to be lived. Sometimes, you know, I, I want to learn, I, I, I observe, some of Christians have taken all of the celebration out of life. You can't, you shouldn't go to parties, you shouldn't go to anything. You got to enjoy life. What's wrong with going to a party? I'm not saying you're going to party that we had in our neighborhood two nights ago. All they heard over 30 shots. Fired off. So you know. First time in my life I had to duck. I turned off the light and then went up on the floor. <laughs> and I was scared. I never experienced anything like that. It was shots, a barrage of shots. And I hear some big booms, so I know them. Them little little guns. Them little 32s or 32s or brother weeks. Life is to be lived. That, that is not the kind of party it's all about. Celebrate your landmarks. I mentioned it in the sermon on, sermon on Esther. That we allow people to tell us that we can't celebrate our, our landmarks. Esther and Mordecai celebrated, commanded the Jews to celebrate the, 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 the festival of Purim. And I'm suggesting that us, we have to learn to celebrate our landmarks. By the way, it's next year, journey you in the six, in the six realm. I want to do it big. If God allows me to get here, I want to do it big. Hallelujah. There's only one thing you can get me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that let me get there. 
we must learn to laugh and enjoy it to the fullest. Work, and this is another point, work is still noble and is the only way to achieve our goals creditably and credibly. Don't think that you're going to sit down warm and pray to happen. We need to get them to listen to our heads. You are not going to pray any house into being. You're going to go to work for it. Stop that. Anything in the The wise man say you're going to work for it. it. Ain't coming down, no, no, man ain't coming down. All my years I've never seen anything come down like that. You got to work. He would caution us to be weary of get rich quick schemes. Somebody get charged yesterday or day before for the Ponzi scheme here in Barbados. These people tell you, oh, you come and you join this little group, and if you join, you get money, and all you want to do is get other people to join, and then money will come into you. But the man, I thought they were all the down there. So in the pyramid, so all the people down there that join, all the money coming into the man at the top. And you're going to join because you want to get rich, rich too. That's what's called a Ponzi scheme. And the police said it is illegal. So somebody got charged, I know that the same fight, kind, but somebody got charged yesterday or the day before. So he would caution us to be wary of get rich, quick schemes that only benefit a few, but often land the unsuspecting in trouble. He would wish to remind us that life does not always fit in a perfect neat package. There will be some disappointments, doubts, and fears. But with God's help, we can navigate through all of these successfully. Amen. Hallelujah. He would urge us finally to never lose sight of God. If God is not in it, it is all vanity. I don't know how we can do it, how anybody can do it, no problem. I've come this far. Recently I've been noting in my own life that it's now for me more years that I've been a Christian. Some of you young people. And you only go for all you want yet. Some decisions to pursue some dreams 
with all their strength, their might, but in their pursuit, pursue you in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Guide us into our truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Wisdom of an old sage in theology of balance. Maybe we need to live a balanced Christian life. All right. Sharing with one another, caring for one another, enjoying the fruits of our labors. And remembering our God at all times in the name of Jesus. We were happy to be in the house of God today. Indeed, we thank all of you for coming and worshiping with us. Those who will join us on Facebook and YouTube later, we want to say thanks. May this word challenge you and may the worship of the saints also be an inspiration to you. In the name of Jesus, we will stand for the dismissal at this time, remembering that as we exit, we are going to be giving God our offerings, because remember, we have to continue the work of the kingdom, and don't let people fool you. Kingdom work requires money, and therefore God expects us to continue to occupy it till he comes. In the name of Jesus. So let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the time spent in your presence. We are asking your blessings on this offering that will be given by your saints and your people. Father, in Jesus' name, may we spend to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Safe journey home. Hallelujah.